Welcome again on a Devish tag. So in the last video we added an image field and in the image field we added a bottom seat and we are getting a data I mean image from the gallery or the camera. So till now this thing is completed and now we have to connect this create profile page with the backend because all the field of the image name and profession all these field are add it onto the create profile page now we just have to send this data to the backend rest api which we already created a rest api endpoint for posting a profile data into the backend you can find that link of the video which we created a rest api endpoint into the description so you know before we send a data from the front end to the back end we have to do the form validation like we cannot send a data name as a empty or profession as a empty i mean we have to send something and we have to ensure that the data will be not null while sending it so we have to do the form validation for it let's do the form validation for our all the text form field which we created so first we will start the validation from the name text field and you know that in the text form field we have a property called validator and in the validator if we pass a value I mean in the validator we will get a value and we will apply a condition that value is empty then return a name can't be empty as a error text so you just remember that we are adding this field and when we hit the submit button then the validation will be uh, will be done in the background and uh, if the name will be empty then we will see a error message over there that name can't be empty so again we have to do the same thing for the all the other text form field like profession text form field we have to add a validator here also and we will write that profession can't be empty similar thing we will do for the dov field also so we have to do the validation for the all the text form field that the field of the not be empty because we have to send something to the backend so let's do the same thing for the title also and uh, we will write a title can't be empty now the last thing is we have to do the validation for the about text also so after adding a validator onto the all the text form field we have to just go above the class and we just have to add a global key to handle this all the validation so just go here and add a global key to handle the validator the same thing we did for the sign in and sign up page also that when we added a validator into the text form field we created a global key and we will pass the global key onto the this list view before we pass a global key we have to assign a controller also to the each text form field because with help of controller only we will get the data of the each field like we will enter a name over here like if i will enter a name like davis tag then with help of controller only we will get that data so we had to add a controller for this all the field so let's create a controller variable also so first variable will be name and uh, it is a text editing controller type the second variable will be a profession for the profession text form field and third variable will be dob for the dob text form field fourth one will be title and last one is about then we have to pass this all the text form field to the respective text form field i mean we have to pass all the controller onto the respective text form field so let's pass it and uh, just go on a respective text form field like we have to pass the name controller onto the name text form field like this similarly we have to pass the profession controller into the profession text form field same goes for the dob just write the right controller and uh, same goes for the title 
and we have to add a text form field controller or here also now we added a text edit controller for the each text form field now we just had to wrap the the list view just go over and we just have to wrap this list view with the form you know that with help of this global key only we will handle the validation and uh, to set the global key to each text form field we have to wrap the this whole list view onto the form widget in the form widget we have a key parameter in this key parameter we will pass the key which we created so let's add the key over here and hit the save now the only thing we have to do is we have to add a button over here so so when we click a button we will first do the form validation then after doing a form validation we will send the data into the backend so we did the same thing for the sign up also i mean we first did this form validation and after doing a form validation only we send the user data like the password and username all this data similar thing we will do over here also so to create a button because we don't have a button yet to, to create a button we just have to use a container like we are doing on to the another video also that for the creating a button we use a container then we will wrap a inkwell widget onto the container so with help of inkwell only we will get a button type of property so we will do the same thing over here so if we hit the save then we will not see any changes because we had to add a color also so let's add a decoration here and the decoration we have to provide a box decoration and inside the box decoration we have a color property inside the color we will provide a colors dot till and hit the save you will see the button i mean the container over here but you will see that the container width is the same width as the list view i mean it's spreading over the whole width of the screen but we set the width as a 150 so to set the width on the inside the list view of the container we have to just wrap with the center and if i will wrap it with the center and hit the save then you will see the width is now according to our stated width let me provide a width to 200 so it will look great and also we will add uh, some border radius so we will get a curvy type of image over here so let's add a border radius and the border radius we will again add a circular border radius and provide the radius 10 and hit the save and now you can see the our button is looking great but there is a problem on the button that if we scroll a button then you will see that there is a space coming like a padding so this is because we added a padding about the list view and uh, in between a padding and list we have a form widget so because of this padding only we are getting a white space between the button so to remove that we just have to do the one thing that we will add a padding inside the list view so list view already have a parameter called padding and we will provide a padding over here and remove this padding widget and uh, just let me remove it and hit the save and you will see the the thing the white space coming here is now gone we just have to do the some modification like we add a vertical as a 30 and our list view is now fine so just we remove the padding widget and added a padding inside the list view then the error is solved now we have to add a text also here so to add a text 
let me go inside the container and inside the container we will provide a child inside the child we will use a text widget and uh, in the text widget we will write submit so the submit button is here so let me go on a sign up page and we will copy the color and the style so in the sign up page we we will just have to copy the style because we we don't want to write the whole thing again and come inside here and uh, add a styling hit the save again and the submit button color and style is changed wrap the text into the another center widget or we simply set the alignment as a center and now the submit button is added successfully to get a submit button property we just have to wrap the widget into the ink well so let's wrap it into the ink well and inside the ink well we have a on tap method so in the on tap method we will do first the validation so to do a validation we know that we just have to call the key first so the key we provided over here a global key we have to call it over here so if the global key dot current state dot validated it means the validation is successful then we will only perform a rest api calling over here so i will simply hit the print statement to do the validation like uh, print validate it and with the save let's do the validation if i will click on a sign up submit button then you can see that all the text form field is red color that name can't be empty profession can't be empty they will be can't be empty and same as for the title and about so if i will add something on the name and again with the submit then you will say that the error of the name can't be empty is, is gone only we have a error professor can't be empty dob and all the other add the profession date title about and hit the submit button then you can see that all the error is now gone so the validation is successfully done and if i will see the output console on a debug console that we add we got the validate message also so now the validation is successful we just have to make a rest api call to make a rest api call we have to use the network handler which we created so first import the network handler then we will do the rest api calling to import a network handler we have to create an instance of the network handler so let me create an instance called final network handler the name of the network handler class is network handler so you know that we already created a network handler for the handling uh, REST API calling over here. Here we already wrote the code of the gate, post, and all those things. We also added our base URL. So if you are new, then I will put the link of the video onto the description. Now we just have to call this network handler. Before calling a network handler, we had to create a data and uh, a JSON object. So let's create a JSON object. Create a JSON object. We need to create a, a map type of variable just we did on a sign in a sign up page that we create a map type of variable that will map a string and a string because in the json object what we have that uh, suppose for you can take example of name so in the back end we have a name field and it is a string and also we will map the corresponding name which we are getting from this text form field to this name field so this name is corresponding to this string 
and this corresponding value of the name is corresponding to this string. So to create a JSON object, we will follow this type of pattern and uh, we will get the data of the particular all the field like name, profession, all, all using the controller which we created. So we created all the controller name, profession, DOB and with help of that controller only we will get the data. So name.txt will get the exact string vggg which we provided and it will assign onto the name field. Similarly, we will do for the profession also. So in the profession, we will attach the profession controller and the corresponding text. Same for the DOB and the title and about field. Now we just have to send this data into the REST API. So to send the data into the REST API, we have to make a post request and uh, which we created a profile dot add endpoint for adding uh, profile data. So this thing we already created into the blog server, I mean into the last Node.js video, we created a post request for the data and you will find a link into the description. And uh, right now it is a local host. I mean, we didn't deploy this endpoint yet onto the Heroku. We had to test it onto the local host only. So what we have to do is we have to change the base URL from the Heroku server to the local host. And we will do this kind of thing into the next coming video because this video is already long. And if I will hit the save and print the response status code over here, let me print a response code. We will get a 404 because we don't have an endpoint onto the Heroku server. Let me print it status code. And uh, let me send this data. First, it will go on a network handler, then it will respond a 404 because we don't have this endpoint yet onto the Heroku server. So in the next video, what we will do that we will change the base URL from the Heroku server to the local host because we have to upload the images also. Second thing we will do that we will handle the image because we didn't did the validation of the image field. And third thing we will create an endpoint for the checking our profile data onto the packet because when we go on the profile page, first we will check that the profile data is available on the backend or not. If there is not available, then we will show this button. And uh, if there is a data already available, then according to that, we will show the profile. So these three things we will do on the next video. So thank you all and happy coding. Stay tuned for the next video. And also please subscribe this channel.